All right, I figured I would uh, go ahead and show the actual making of a of more of a real part here. Um, most of my previous videos have just been me cutting down some heat sinks and so forth on here. Um, here I'm actually trying to make some uh, a useful part. Um, <clears throat> you can see here I've got a couple of uh, I've got a couple of them sitting up top. Um, one of them is actually a mistake. So, um, which is kind of the reason I'm making this video. When I was originally going to make these first two, I didn't. Uh, didn't sit down and make any video, but uh, I decided when I screwed up one of them that I'd just go ahead and make a video out of uh, making the replacement. Uh, <clears throat> if you look at them here, um, you see the first one over here has a counterboard hole, and this one has a counterboard hole, but uh, obviously they're in different sides of the part. Um, this one here is actually the screw up. Uh, when I was drilling the counterboard hole, I wasn't paying attention to which side of the uh, part I was drilling into, and uh, since they don't make any uh, metal putter backer inners, um, this one's pretty much scrap. So I'm going to have to toss this one and uh, make a replacement for it. Uh, the basic idea behind these parts is actually um, something for the larger mill that I've got. I am planning to make a, uh, X an X-Tram adjuster. Um, that I can mount up here onto the uh, side of the carriage for the head. Um, and that will allow me to use the set screw that's inside the part there to actually um, set the head into a particular tilt um, and adjust it in a very fine increments. Um, as you can see here, the head attaches onto this and it's actually able to tilt um, 90 degrees to 90 degrees. Uh, when you're actually using it for milling, you want it to be down here, you want it to be at zero degrees, and you want that to be very, very accurate. Um, so that's what this part is going to help me do, is actually mount it up here, and I'll be able to use those set screws so that the, each time I bring the head back up, I should be pretty much um, right on target without having to do a lot of tapping and uh, readjusting each time I, if I do manage to tilt the head on this thing. So um, that was kind of the idea behind them. Uh, one would actually probably be sufficient if I just wanted to swing it back up and um, have it come in contact with that and, and lock it in there. Um, I was thinking about going ahead and making two since it would allow um, me to loosen one and tighten another and use that as kind of a very um, a very fine adjustment as far as tramming it in. <clears throat> tramming it in just means that um, as you measure, you're measuring how perpendicular the uh, mill the actual mill spindle is to the table of the mill you want that you want it to measure the same height above you know seven or eight inches over this way as it does seven or eight inches over this way um, so that way you know that it is uh, you know, as perpendicular as you can possibly get it um, you can also have you also have tram in the y direction here um, same idea you want it to be as perpendicular as possible so that it's not cutting at a slight angle um, as you go over the top of a part. So that's what these parts are going to be for. Um, each one's made up of a, uh, a little set screw there, um, a quarter inch by 20 um, thread pitch on it, and um, then there's also a counterboard hole for the bolt that's going to hold it in place on the um, carriage. So the bolt just fits right in there, should fit flush. And uh, that's what we're going to go about making here. So I'll kind of go through the video, um, showing the steps as I go about as I go about making the part. All right, so here you'll see my uh, drawing that I've made up. Um, I always like to go ahead and make a, uh, a CAD drawing of what I'm getting ready to do. Um, it helps me out. I cannot um, I cannot keep track of it in my head when I'm working on something exactly. Um, what was supposed to be and where things were supposed to be located um, and uh, I can usually sketch these things out on paper but I just kind of like an, a nice clean drawing from the computer um, you can see here that this drawing is kind of detailing the, the various parts of it um, and it's to scale so it should pretty much match up to the piece when it's put on the drawing um, anyway one thing I always like to do uh, on the manual mill here is to uh, all of the dimensions that are going to be important to me where I'm, I'm going to be moving around. I like to put the uh, actual number of turns and then how many extra thousands I'm going to be moving um, 
of a partial turn. So from the edge of this part to the um, center of that hole is going to be three turns plus twelve and a half thousandths. Um, and then my next move would be to move from that center to this center. Um, that's um, 0.475 inches or it's seven turns and thirty seven and a half thousandths. Uh, makes it a little bit simpler for me. Um, that way I'm not trying to do math as I'm working. Um, another place where I can very quickly and easily screw up. So if I write those things down, it, it does help me out. All right, now I'm going to show um, using the wiggler here to find the uh, the edge of the part that I'm going to be uh, working on here today. Um, wiggler is just kind of a device to uh, to find either edges or the centers of scribe marks, um, things of that nature, um, by basically turning the table in until the uh, the wiggler stops wiggling. Um, here in a second I'll show you kind of what that looks like. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, start the mill up and turn the uh, spindle up to about a thousand RPM. Uh, Got to get the gear engaged here. Difficult to do with only one hand. All right. So let's try that again with the gear engaged this time. All right. And so you can see that the uh, wiggler is kind of jostling around, um, tracing out a circle there. Um, as I start to bring the part in closer, um, that wiggler is going to start settling down. And the circle that it's tracing will get smaller and smaller. So we basically we've got it now to where it's, uh, it's not bouncing around. Um, looks to be very steady. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as my position. Alright, so we've got that position marked in. Um, we are, right now we are actually 50 thousandths from the edge. Um, the disc on the end of that wiggler is 100 thousandths, so um, you're looking at half of that is the radius of the, uh, of the wiggler's head there. So we actually have to move in 50 thousandths before we'll be right on the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, given the way these dials work, it's easiest if I move to 50 and then dial it in from there if I can get this to focus. Now we'll just go ahead and pull it in until we reach zero. Alright, so we just moved 50 thousandths in. If we look at the wiggler and bring it down, we should find that we are right split on the edge. If I can get that to focus. So the spindle is right centered above the edge of the part right now. So I've been able to find my edge and that will allow me to uh, to do the rest of my operations. 